Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about loops, specifically for loops and while loops. Uh, loops basically allow you to iterate across um, several different items or across um, a number of things and do things for each uh, item. So let's start with for loops. I'm just going to give you an example of one of the most, basically a very easy uh, for loop, just the most basic of for loops. So here's the format of it. We write for, um, let's say var i equals zero. So this is going to be our starting value. And the second part is go we're going to separate it with a semicolon. Second part is going to be uh, the number that we're going to go to. So this basically means that we're going to go from zero to uh, all the way until i is less than or equal to 10. The third one is going to be how we're going to increment it. So i plus plus means that we're going to increment it by one every single time. Plus plus basically just means incremented by one every time. So basically um, every time we, so this is going to go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 10. And basically we, we can do whatever we want inside of this for each uh, iteration. So for each one, let's just iterate, let's just console log i, and we're going to get rid of this stuff here. So here we should see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because uh, we're iterating from zero all the way to ten. We're incrementing by ones. Uh, if we change this to two, we would increment it by twos. So we would go up by twos. Uh, well, uh, let's see. Oh, I, pl I plus equals two. Uh, oh, that's an infinite loop here. So let me uh, redo that. That was an example of an infinite loop, infinite loop which we normally don't want to do. Uh, yeah, so here we're incrementing by twos. Uh, I guess I plus two, oh, that I plus two just would have been, uh, we went from zero to two and it would have uh, done it infinitely or something like that. So just know that um, we already did this infinite loop thing. That was bad because you saw that it just logged zero like 5,000 times. So that is a for loop and uh, let's do arrays. So uh, usually we don't iterate through just numbers like this um, unless you know you want to. But one of the most powerful things that loops can do is they allow you to iterate over arrays, which you normally won't do directly because of the array methods that we talked about before. So let's say we have an array called, but uh, just know that behind the scenes, uh, looping through an array uses this for loop here. So let's say var array equals, let's just name it, um, let's just scale, give it like three, six, 9, 12. And so if we want to do a for loop to iterate over the items in this array, we could do 4 var i equals 0. Again, that's going to be our starting value. i is going to be less than array.length. So we're going to go from uh, 0 all the way to the length of this array is going to be 4. So uh, we're going to go until less than 4. So we're going to go basically 0, 1, 2, 3, which is going to be less than 4. It's not going to reach 4 because it's going to be less than 4. And again, we're going to increment it by 1 each time. And let's just console log each item in the uh, array. Instead of doing i, this time, if we just do i, it's just going to log um, 0, 1, 2, 3. Let me comment this out so we can see it better. It would just be 0, 1, 2, 3. If we want to iterate or console log each item in the array, we could do array with the index of i. Remember, this is going to be 0 the first time, then 1, 2, 3. Remember, that's going to access the item in the array that represents that index. We can change these to whatever we want. We can change this to like dog, cat, tiger. And we can add more ed elements to this elephant. It's going to uh, iterate through however many items there are. Let's say uh, lion. And so what that's going to do is that. And we can also include the index at the beginning if we wanted to. So we can know what um, index each item in the array is. So that is how you iterate over an array. If we want to go backwards, we could do uh, we could go in the opposite direction. So i is equal to right out length. And we're going to go to uh, i is greater than or equal to 0. Hopefully I won't accidentally do another infinite loop here. And we're going to go minus minus this time. And this should go backwards now. So we have uh, 5. Well, 5, I guess. Oh, because I have greater than or equal to 0. This should be array.length minus 1. And yeah, that will give us our 5 items in our array. We can also iterate over objects. Let's say we have an object um, called object and let's just give it a few things name michael age uh, 28 uh, location 
I'm in Houston, Texas right now. And then hobbies, you know, let's just say JavaScript. So if we want to iterate over the uh, key value pairs in this object, we could do four. And the way that we do it, we give it each uh, key a variable. Standard practice is just var key in obj. These can be any words. You can make this like boo or whatever, but I'm just going to do key in obj. And let's just uh, console log key for each one. So that's going to give us all the keys. Let me kind of bring this out right here. So you see we have, we're iterating over, over all of our keys and we're logging them, name, age, location, hobbies. We can also do key, comma, and then object key. So remember this is a bracket notation. To access the values, you need to use bracket notation because this key is actually going to be um, a string. And so you need to access that with the bracket notation here. So here we're logging the key and the value of each key after that. So name, Michael, age 28, location Houston, Texas, hobbies, JavaScript. Um, something we can do, so you can do anything you want in this. So um, you can do something like uh, if key or if ob key is equal to, well, let's do if key is equal to uh, hobbies, we're just going to change it to um, object key is equal to, uh, let's give it another hop. Uh, let's just say um, jogging or something like that. So now if the key is equal to hobbies, which is going to be this last one right here, it's going to change that to jogging. Remember this is updating an object. Now if we console log the array, it should have that update um, key value to uh, hobbies. So you can see here that hobbies is now jogging. So iterating over allows you to you know find what you want and then change it uh, once you reach it. Or you can do anything that you want in there. You don't even need to log anything. You can just say uh, return just console log hello or something like that. That's just going to log hello four times um, right here. So that is how you iterate over objects. And I have a lot of clutter with logs going on. Next one is going to be while loops. Um, these are just like for loops, just they iterate over um, items in a slightly different way. So what I can do is. Um, maybe something like var count equals zero. And then we can say while count is less than or equal to 10, we're going to um, console log count. We have to be very careful here because count is going to be zero right now. And if we just left it the way it was, we're going to get another infinite loop because it's just going to stay at zero. It's always going to be less than 10. So what we want to do is each time that we're in here, we want to increment count by one. And I can do this plus plus. Plus plus is the same thing as plus equals, which means that uh, we're just going to increase it by one every time. So I'm just going to do plus plus here. So now every time we're in this loop, we're going to increment count by one. And we're going to console log the count. So it's going to be zero. It's going to go up to one. And then it's going to loop through again. It's going to be less than 10. And so it's going to log ten, one, increment it by one, all the way to 10, where it's going to log 10. It's going to increment it to 11. It's going to check this again. It is now bigger than 10, so it is not going to log the 11. So this should log 0 through 10, which it does. Um, you can do something else, like maybe uh, while, we'll say, uh, we'll say bool equals true. So we'll say while bool equal while bool, remember this is, it just means that it's true already. So we don't need to do equals, whoops, we don't need to do equals true here because bool is already true. Uh, we're going to console log. Um, still true, and then uh, let's just do something here. Let's make an array called, uh, let's just have some animals here, cat, pig. Uh, we'll say, uh, and in here, well, let's make conditional. Um, I'm just making stuff up here. Let's say count equals, well, let's give it a count, count equals zero. Uh, let's see. Well, let's do something else here. Let's iterate through the array. So inside of this loop, we are going to um, iterate through the array. So uh, for bar i equals zero, remember this is how we iterate through an array. i is less than or equal to array dot length. Uh, let's say it's called length, and i plus plus. And then we are going to uh, say if 
uh, array i is equal to pig bool, which I said, bool equal to false. So what this is going to do now, this is kind of interesting, is it's going to iterate through the items in the array, so dog, then cat, then pig, um, and for each one, array i here is going to be the array with the index, so it's going to start with 0, 1, 2, which is going to be um, dog, then cat, then pig. If it's equal to pig, then we're going to change bool to false. What this is going to do, it's going to, th be, uh, it's going to iterate through these, it's going to be still true, um, let's console log still true here. Um, let's see, let's just put it here. Uh, I'm just making stuff up here. So I guess what this is going to do is just going to log still true once, and then it's just going to do this complete thing inside of the while, and then uh, it's going to reach the pig, it's going to set it equal to false, this is no longer going to be true. Um, and then we'll just say um, found pig or something like that. I'm just showing you guys how you might use it. So what we should expect to see is just still true once and found pig once because we're just looping through this entire thing inside of this while loop. Um, and that's what we do see. Um, now last thing here is infinite loops. Uh, they're bad. As you can see, I, I accidentally showed you one earlier. Uh, basically, if you have a loop that will never ever end. It's an infinite loop. It's just gonna basically crash your browser. Let me do one for you guys right here. So if I never set this bool to false, uh, let's just say, let's just leave it like this. I'm gonna take this away. Uh, so you can notice that bool is true and we're never setting it to false inside of this while loop. So it's always going to be true. And what we should expect to see is that still true is gonna be logged infinite an infinite number of time it's just going to keep on going and the browser is going to kind of freeze up and not do anything and then you'll have to like restart it uh, so I'm gonna do it you normally want to try to avoid this but sometimes you accidentally do it but just know that you can always exit out of it um, so here we go let's try it out you can see it's still true is logging 371 it's gonna keep on going up and uh, can't really do anything else here because it's basically freezing up uh, it's just taking up all the memory in the browser and, but you can always exit out of it. I found that if you click twice, it'll close the uh, browser tab. So it's not going to be the end of the world. It's not going to explode your computers or computer or anything. Your computer will not be damaged if you accidentally write an infinite loop. So you don't need to worry about that. So that is how you write for and while loops. They're really useful um, and they're used a lot. I never really write them directly anymore because, um, you know, we talk about the JavaScript array method. So we have the for each method, which will iterate through the items in the array. So you're not going to use a for loop directly there, but just know that the for each method uses the for loop in the background. So it's good to know how that works. Um, I never really use for while loops anymore because there's methods that kind of do them for you and these just kind of go on in the background, but it's just good to know. And also you need to know it for the Hack Reactor interview as well. So know what they are, but just know that also we really, really use them because they're kind of methods that kind of do them and do these things in the background now. All right, that's it for now. In the next video, we're probably going to talk about conditionals like if-else statements, which are really useful also. Thanks for watching, and bye.